I want to print some functional strong parts for my car and this carbon fiber nylon looks like just the ticket but all I've got is this bone stock Ender 3 Pro can it be done let's find out go Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So lots is new. We've got a new logo, we've got a new microphone, we've got a new channel name. So welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we combine 3D printing, machining, fabrication, and anything else we can think of to go as fast as possible for as little money as we can get away with. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. And for extra cool points, hit the bell so I can pester you directly. Now, let's get into the meat of it. PLA, perfect for 3D printing, as long as it's a vase or a family of wobbly dinosaurs for a four-year-old. Uh, making bits for a motorsport or any other uh, demanding functional application, yeah, okay, it's not so good. In a hot engine bay, this lot will soon be a sagging mess. No good to anyone. Enter carbon fibre reinforced nylon. Now we're talking. So nylon, polyamide, whatever proper material. Um, filled with glass fibre, it's used to make the casings for proper, expensive, prosumer, professional level tools and lots of other stuff. So this, this is filled with carbon fibre. Well, carbon fibre is better than glass fibre. So this has got to be super skookum super good and hey i'm printing with carbon fiber it'll impress the boys down the down the pub anyway but can you print it on the most popular 3d printer out there that's what i'm going to find out okay so you got me my ender is not quite stock i've got the normal standard creality branded upgrades i've got the yellow springs the metal extruder the glass bed and the capricorn tube but I've also got a clone all-metal hot end and some hardened metal nozzles. You need the all-metal hot end to get to the high temperatures that nylon needs and you need the hardened nozzles because the brass ones will be worn out very quickly by the carbon fibre. But apart from those two things, I'm willing to bet there are thousands of 3D printers out there with the same spec as I have. So I've done some research and there's some great videos out there already. This one is by Modbot and it's very good um, and, but including this one mostly they're done by people with much fancier Ender 3s they've got branded hot ends they've got upgraded boards they've got newer firmware they've got direct drive don't have any of that so what can be done with just the lightest of upgrades about 40 quid's worth that's what we want to find out so Let's get stuck in. Let's open this and let's get printing. Oh, hang on. This is nylon, so there's one big thing we've got to sort out first, and that's moisture. So I'm going to skip over this really quickly, so chances are you've already heard about this. But I just want to show you what I did to do this as cheaply as possible. So nylon, very hygroscopic. Hy which means it absorb, absorbs moisture. So you put that moisture within the filament through a hot end at 250 degrees. Whew, suddenly you've got part 3D printer, part kettle. Bad times. So you need to dry the filament out so there's little to no moisture inside at all. And this is worth doing every time before you start printing. So I've got a fan oven that maintains a nice easy 60 degrees centigrade so four hours in there and it's ready to go once dried in the oven i keep the nylon in this box whilst i'm printing it's got little rollers in there so the spool can spin it's got a little circulation fan and a tray of desiccant and i can maintain this whole box at below 10 percent relative humidity <laughs> it's probably lower than that but that's all my gauge says there are proper dryers and proper filament boxes out there, but these cost money. And we've already discussed this, this channel's approach to spending money. 
why buy it when you can make it for half the price so we've got our printer we've got our filament kept nice and dry let's go print him So as with any new filament, I did a standard bunch of tests, a temp tower, retraction, etc., etc. And the same smart website gives a 240, 260 degrees centigrade and 80 as the temperature for the bed. So I ran this temp tower from 240 to 260 in five degree steps for the bottom half without the cooling fan on and then the top half with the fan on. And the first one failed. Not pretty. So I repeat it. And this was flying until this happened. So I'm calling this a successful failure. It was bottom half, no cooling fan, beautiful. A little bit of blobbing as you get up to the higher temperatures there, so that's 255. But that's just in the detail. The rest around here is fine, but with bridging like this and overhangs, who needs a cooling fan? This is this kind of detail, that's all cosmetic. I'm not interested in cosmetic, I just want it to be strong and functional. So, so as we got into the cooling fan, the cooling fans then warp this overhang, and you can see from the video, catches the nozzle, te tears it straight over. So, rule number one, no cooling. 240 is the best for detail, look at the bottom, it's really nice. But 255, well, 240, as you can see, the interlayer adhesion isn't very good. I mean, there's literally nothing there on that at all. Not perfect. And let's see where it snaps. Ha, right at the 240 layer there. See if we can get it to snap. The higher temperatures. No, can't do it. That was it. That's all I got, people. Right then. I think we've got our settings. 255, let's go for it. So you may have noticed I flipped the ultra base and used glue stick on the clean side because I was having lots of first layer issues. Couldn't even run my level test. The nylon would just ignore the bare base, uh, the, the textured side of the ultra base and just follow the nozzle and lift off. So it just wants to stick to itself. As soon as you've got a first layer down, you haven't got a problem. It'll print all day long. It's getting that first day layer down right. That's the critical thing. So my advice, don't even bother with anything else. Just flip the glass, smooth glass, layer of glue stick, and you're away. Apparently Garolite works quite well, but hmm, I don't have any. And I don't want to buy any. But this setup works beautifully. So the benchy well so of course the next stop 3d printing law you've got to do a benchy absolutely i would be lynched if i didn't do a benchy and again the brim 255 degrees 80 on the bed and look how it turned out i'm really really impressed with this filament really really impressed there's a little bit okay <laughs> bit of blobbing there but I'm a bit losing I'm really not fussed again the bridging's nice the detail is nice yeah you lose the name on the back but hey again if I want it to just look pretty I'm going to print it in PLA this is about being strong so this this for me this is a success So you can see the settings I use to print this Benchy on the right hand side. Uh, what I'll try and do is work out a way of hosting my Cura profile and then I'll paste a link to that at the bottom in the description. Um, the key thing here is temperature 255, works beautifully, nice and slow with the first layer, otherwise adhesion is going to be a problem. And glass, clean glass, plus a bit of glue stick, a lovely level bed you're sailing really no problem i'm so impressed with the ender it's just et this up what's this got to do with motorsport i hear you ask well i've got another video that i'm working on at the moment the second half where i'm putting 
uh, individual throttle bodies on my Mini. And I'm going to 3D print the manifold. Guess what I'm making it out of? Aha! So, if that interests you, then click my other videos. Um, even better, subscribe and press the bell so you'll be told. Um, if you found this interesting, then please press the thumbs up. It'd be really useful. And in the meantime, keep your carbon fiber within the nylon. And I'll catch you later.